Greetings, grasshoppers. Welcome to the show today. This is your RJ, and I can't wait to talk to you today about the many, many ways that your business could use a messenger bot. So before we get started with all that, let me tell you this. I am cross-posting this video to many places on the internets, and therefore, if you're not watching for Black Belt Bots page, totally cool. Go up to the post, hit on that link, that link in the first couple of sentences there. That'll take you right to the Black Belt Bots page. I request that you do that because then I can read your comments, I can answer your questions, and I can talk to you better from here. So without further ado, my name is RJ Redden. Entrepreneurs hire me to outsmart traditional marketing practices because people are sick and tired of being sold to, and most entrepreneurs hate to sell anyway. So I build messaging that connects to people and builds great relationships. I do it using messenger bots. You can too. That's the point of this show. So darlings, grasshoppers, uh, valued audience members. Uh, let's start it up today. Hello, everybody. Uh, Aaron is here. Welcome, Aaron. I was just on her show, the Aaron Strayer show. Have you heard about it? Hear about it. Go to it. It's awesome. And uh, Terry Johnson is here. Hello, Terry. It's so good to see you today. Desiree can't have a show without Desiree. Um, so uh, now we're having a party. Uh, let's get started. So what can you do with one of these messenger bots? So let me back up just a little bit. If you're brand new, if you're just one of the, if because messenger bots have been all the rage, right? Uh, social media marketing world, all, you know, uh, people were speaking about bots all over the place. Uh, there have been a lot of other connect con conventions where messenger bots, the keynote speaker. And so the, all the people we know are talking about them. And what, what are they for? What are they really? So what they really are is an opportunity to have a conversation with people. F opportunity for your business to connect to people. Sometimes we use automated messages that come in a sequence like seven day free mini course or, you know, five day challenge, something like that. Sometimes we use messages like, Hey, I'm showing up online live in 10 minutes. Come join me. Here's a link. Um, there's a lot of the automated part, but there's also a part where this human being comes in and answers messages and answers questions for people, for people. And it attempts to take that bot converse, a conversation we're having within a bot, and take it offline to a face-to-face. -face. That's the point of this stuff uh, for me. And that's what I want to teach you how to do. I think it is all the rage because it is so different than any method we've ever known. So let's talk about how to use these in your business. Brad Friedman's here. Good morning, WiseBot Master. I'm here to soak up your knowledge. Yes. Uh, be like water. I think that's what Bruce Lee used to say. I think there was a book by that name. I'm not sure, but welcome, Brad. I'm so happy to have you here. So what can you do with one of those bots? You can do three things. And there are three things that every business, nonprofit, solopreneur, there are three things that we all need to be doing, no matter what we are doing for a living. Um, one is to get more people to your door, <laughs> whether that's a virtual door like this live stream is, or whether that's a real life door where somebody can go visit you in an office. Everybody is looking to get more people. Now, at a time when anybody can basically take the microphone that has come with their phone, uh, open Facebook and go live and produce uh, a live stream or produce a piece of music or anything like that in a, in a time where content creation is so easy to do. That means that you are fighting against a lot of times, a lot of different messages. It's not just you out there marketing your business and talking about your products and services. It's the 10 other people that are talking at the same time. And how do you gain people's attention when that is going on? You gain people's attention by caring about them, 
making them feel seen and heard, and doing something different than what everybody else is doing. And messenger bots allow you to do all of those things, all those things. If you are a person who is in business, most of us create some content. Most of us create a podcast or a live stream show or some videos or blog posts, something pretty consistently. And it's getting, getting people to those places where they can, in a low stress, no stress, no obligation environment, listen to what you have to say, try the things that you're suggesting. When you can get people into that space, then people will self-select if they want to continue maybe down the path to a better, a bigger relationship with you, or they'll self-select themselves out and see themselves out the door and stop listening or watching or whatever they want to do. So a lot of us have become these content creators. How do you use that? How do you get people to that content? <laughs> You're creating it. It's hard enough to create it sometimes. How are you getting people to it? For me, and for a lot of my clients, uh, we use something that I call, it's very lingo, sorry about this, a reminder bot. It's a reminder bot. What I do is I get on and I make a broadcast to only to those people that are interested. I give them a reason to watch. I give them a reminder and I give them a link. That's all that you need, really. In this world, in this sort of everything's flying past at a thousand miles an hour world, where we forget to even connect with the human beings who live in our house sometimes. I've heard about it from friends. I've never done it myself. Anyway, in this busy world, when you can deliver value to somebody that they've asked for and that they get some value out of, then you've created a connection. They'll remember you because you actually offered something valuable. If you think about it, if you think about most of the marketing messages you hear in a day, most of them don't apply. Don't apply to you. Can't tell you how many faxes I used to get when I worked at Home Depot about Viagra. I don't, I, I don't have a need for this product. Uh, you know, can't tell you how many advertisements, uh, you know, elections are coming up sort of, sort of relatively soon. Can't tell you how many emails are in my box right now. There's probably a door hanger on my door as we speak. There's always something going on. There's always somebody that wants you to come to their event, watch them do their stuff, all of this, engage with them somehow. But if you are a person who delivers valuable stuff when, when it's the right time, when people have asked for it, then you stand out above the crowd. Um, Terry, I'm going to catch up here. Terry Johnson says people are afraid to lose their audience. Well, they are. And we are all going by information, I think, Terry, that is a little bit, um, it's kind of accepted as knowledge. Um, when it was more true maybe a few years ago than it is now. You see, I read a lot when I was first going into business for myself. Uh, this was three years ago. I had graduated. Uh, well, I graduated college. I took a job with a corporation. It wasn't for me. And so I uh, came home to start my own business. And I'm reading about content crush. I'm reading about all of these people creating great stuff, but it's so the internet is full filled with great information, terrible information and information somewhere on the spectrum in between. And I was reading about that and thinking that's, that's really, that's really a problem, you know? And then uh, we get to this, this point where you feel like you have to scream at people and be over the top just to stay on top of their mind. Let me tell you, that may have been true uh, a while ago, but right now, because of the content crush, because everywhere we look, there's stuff that we sometimes identify and never actually consume. How many times, raise your hand, You nobody will see you, raise your hand if you have 
follow if you've seen something and you've followed through to a website and somebody and there's a, a white paper available or there's a little program or a challenge available or a download and you have downloaded that freebie and said to yourself i will get to that and have never gotten to it we do this all the time we identify stuff that we think is important by people that you know we think will be important to us sometimes and we never get to it because we are so we are so looking for, I think, value and human contact uh, that we're, we're really hurting sometimes. And uh, I think that people are absolutely afraid to lose their audience. To me, my audience number that I want is much lower than most people's audience members that they want. I want a close group of people I am actually connected with. I don't care about getting thousands and thousands of people that have absolutely no connection, except they clicked a button once. Worthless to me. It's worthless to me. Uh, and so, uh, and many people may disagree. It's totally fine. That's part of what the comment section is for. Uh, so very good. Uh, Aaron says, email seems like it's screaming at me because it's written in all caps. Uh, absolutely. That stuff, uh, email, I'm not advocating getting rid of email, by the way. Email is a fine, functional format. Um, I, I do ask you, though, to consider, uh, instead of the usual kind of structure of an email, um, to maybe email your folks and do it, do it with a bit of a different focus. Instead of I've got to keep your on your top of your mind all the time, you know, I think that if we all used email for good uh, instead of the way that we've been taught to use email, which is if I keep my name in front of you, maybe you'll choose me. Um, those kind of connections are tenuous at best and they fall apart at the first sign of trouble. And so, uh, so write email that actually connects. Uh, somebody is real good at that. You know her, Kim Boltzma. She's probably here somewhere. And uh, she she writes some good content that connects. And she writes some good emails. That I actually read her emails. Uh, so that's good stuff. Uh, Tish is here. Hello. Uh, yes, Emoji Central, my friend. Uh, and hashtag Central. Good morning, Tish. I'm glad to see you. Teresa says, can't stand email. I walked away from it a while ago. Couldn't be happier. Uh, yeah, for me, uh, I haven't sent anything out in a really long time. Um, it's just not where my brain is focused, basically. Um, but occasionally when I do have something of value, I will email it out to my people. And sometimes it doesn't even include links and calls to action. Sometimes, because sometimes I just want to offer somebody something to somebody. Uh, but it's less targeted than I like, uh, so I don't use it very often. Brad says, so true. I try hard and fail miserably at consuming all the content I find and think looks interesting. Absolutely. And here's what, here's what Messenger does. And we're going to get to this a little bit later, but I'll just preview this. That Messenger allows you to put that same type of content that you're running in, out, into out on the internet and that you're creating. It allows you to take that stuff and put it in a format that is imminently consumable imminently consumable okay so what i'm talking about is yeah that white paper may be the most interesting marketing report that has ever been written on the face of the earth but i'm telling you walls of text don't generally get read by by the majority of people there's some there's some folks that totally enjoy that type of stuff uh usually have doctor behind their name and uh, write things like that all the time but for me consumable content is it's valuable at the moment it is short and sweet it's a it's a it's a shot glass full of content and it asks you to do an exercise right after it so that you can cement the information that you just learned. That's the kind of information that I love to distribute through a bot because that is something that will get people on the road to, to better mastery of whatever subject is happening there. Whatever you're teaching people, if you just give them 
here's the stuff. Enjoy. If you just, if you, or if you hand them, okay, here's the stuff. Let me ask you a couple of questions. That's even better because they have to reflect on what they just read. Next, here's the content. I'm going to ask you a few questions and then I'm going to ask you to do something to report back to me. That's the best type of learning experience generally because people have to get on their feet with that knowledge. Once they've had that experience, they're not going to go anywhere else but you for whatever services it is you provide. I got off on a tangent there, everybody. I am so sorry. Uh, anyway, a very good uh, Kim Bolsa, Bolsma, S.E. Oprah and queen of email conversion. She is. Uh, walls of text don't get read. They don't. They don't. They don't even get read inside messenger bots. Trust me on this. I uh, I see something that's over four wrapped lines, and I'm cutting that thing apart. Um, so so very good. So getting more people to your door, the number one thing that you can do with a messenger bot, and it absolutely doesn't matter what kind of business you run, what kind of nonprofit you run, unless there are huge amounts of privacy laws uh kind of stapled to every single thing that you do and some folks are in industries where that's correct there are industries and companies that won't let you use messenger to communicate with people but most of the people that i teach are entrepreneurs and solopreneurs and we usually don't have those kinds of red tape following us around most every business, every nonprofit needs more people, more people to, in the case of a nonprofit, donate, volunteer, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, for, for businesses, it's, you know, more clients in the door. So messenger bots help you do that by helping people actually consume the content that it is you're producing out there. Uh, you can also use uh, Facebook ads and other types of things to drive people uh, to live streams, messenger, uh, drive people to content. Messenger bots aren't the only thing, but what once you get uh, once you get a crowd of people in there, once you hit a critical mass, then you can use you can use that to make your show better. The show isn't about me. It isn't about me telling you everything I know and hoping you'll come do business with me. It's me, I, you know, I have a picture in my head of somebody out there who wants to get a hold of this thing, thinks it sounds great, but just doesn't either have the time to devote to learning the technology or has maybe some fears around technology. I have a picture in my head of who I'm talking to. I want to help that person. Uh, this is something that I swiped uh, freely from Entrepreneurs on Fire, the guy who does that podcast. I can't remember his name right now, but that's what he said. What, oh, John Lee Dumas. I don't know how I remembered that. This coffee must be working. Anyway, thinking about a person to help um, and then helping that person, you can get then get feedback in your bot about how well you're doing. And that's another thing that that bots do that nothing else does. Okay. Second, uh, developing relationships with new people. Great. So you got them to your live stream. Great. So that there are, you've got more people listening to your podcast. How do you then stop and develop new relationships with them? How do you create messaging that lets people know who you are, what you do, and why you do what you do. How do you, how, how do you do that? There's so many do's in that sentence. Let's just clear that up for a sec. Um, that is, that's kind of the heart and the essence of how you want to present your side of the conversation, letting people know, you know, who this, who this person really is that they're considering either getting services from or collaborating with or making a referral later on. Great stuff. How do you create messaging like that? And, and it's always going to be an and with me because you can present yourself really, really well. But if the person that you're talking to doesn't feel seen, heard, or listened to, you're going to have a problem. Uh, so the and here is how do you, how do you, you know, get people to talk about the same? 
You're in a conversation. Never forget this. In a messenger bot, you're in a conversation. This is not just a one-way marketing tool anymore. The, the game has changed. The rules are different. Get the different shoes on uh, and play this game. Uh, do do conversations with people for everything, every, you know, two things you say about yourself or your business, ask a question. Questions can be open-ended or closed. Uh, we all learned from high school English class, right? The questions can lead to entirely different branches of conversation. Let this happen. Encourage it to happen. Encourage input by people and encourage choice. Uh, and you will be on your way. So letting them know who you are and what you're about, getting some feedback from people. And the third, the third real tenet for developing those relationships is onboarding and qualifying people, helping them find the information that they want to find. Long time ago, did websites for a living and uh, helping people find the information in under three clicks because you've only got five seconds to stick them uh, and, you know, all of these pressures to get the message out and concise and immediately so that people will kind of know, you know, if they need to proceed further or not. Um, the, the same rules, the same concepts hold true in about the same rules about timing do not. Uh, which is really good, really nice, by the way. Uh, let me let me uh, let me catch up. That is key in a messenger bot. You are in a conversation. You are, you are. People, so many people I run into, other bot builders, they just they're about building that list. They're about the number and how many people are in there. I'm not about that. I'm about let's build something together. Let's build something together. Maybe it'll never lead to a transaction doesn't matter because honestly in order to function these days you've got to have a circle of friends you've got to have a community you've got to have people that you collaborate with and refer and do all of this stuff with it is it's not a good lone wolf world out there joey garrity said it on the aaron strayer show a little bit little bit back uh lone wolf syndrome uh it's it doesn't for solopreneurs it just leads to burnout really so developing that communicate community of people within your bot not just transactions but people that's it that's huge uh and that will help you build those solid relationships oh adam's here now we are having a party precisely right now uh adam's here and he says at least your inner botrific value and you do you know what no matter who you are you and your message have some value you have some value to offer or else you wouldn't have started a business or a nonprofit or whatever, a side hustle, whatever you're doing. If you didn't think it had value, you would not be here learning how to take that value and communicate it in a little bit different way. So yeah, unleash the value people. Uh, Adam has said it and now it must happen. Teresa says, RJ, I'm working on something in real time and it inspired a, a question. Can I use a messenger bot? to pull people into a live event. Yes, yes, you can. Um, so I don't know if you have uh, been to my friend Stephen Healy's shows. I do a show with him every Wednesday. We're doing it at a different time tomorrow, but he has uh, a thing where if you type guest into the comments, then it the bot will send you a link to join him on camera you can pull people into live events and you know it depends on on what sort of a live event you are looking for if it's a live online event it's very very easy to preload a link and say to anybody you want hey type in guest you'll get on the show with me today now if it's a live uh, in-person event uh that might be a little bit different uh but it still could be done so if you are speaking to a big crowd at your next TEDx event. Uh, and you want to use a bot to enhance that live event speaking experience, you can, well, first of all, let people know there's a bot. Obviously collect people way before the event uh, is a good idea. And then just before you're about to go up on stage and speak, 
throw a question out there. Hey, is there anything special you want to hear about today? And then do your speaking gig, take the feedback, do your speaking gig and come back to people and say, Hey, what did you get out of that? What was your number one takeaway out of that? And what are you going to do about it? Um, those are things that make people think those are things that make people feel something and attach to you, even though it's a bot and they know it's a bot. Um, okay. So yes, you can use a, a messenger bot to pull people into a live event. If that didn't answer your question, give me a little bit more explanation as to what your live event is. And I'll be able to, to tell you what you want to know. Uh, bots are texting on steroids. It really is. And see here, here's why it's on steroids. Because normally when you're texting back and forth with somebody, there is, it's kind of a singular communication. You've got a little bit from me, a little bit from you, a little bit from me, a little bit from you. What I can make a bot do in the background with the, with how you, with the information that you're giving me by answering questions and making choices in the messenger bot, there is so much more that I can know about what gives you a little bit of value. It's not just text back and forth. It's now, by the way you answer a question, I can say, oh, this person might be interested in hearing about this thing that I've got going on later on. Or this person never wants to hear about this thing ever again in their lives. Or this person, you know, you get so many ideas just watching how people walk the path of your bot. That's why it's texting on steroids, Terry. That's why it's so important. That, that's why. Um, okay, I will end that there. Uh, there are many people scared of tech. We have to show them that tech is cool. You know what? With that hat, it's a start, Adam. Uh, yes, it is really hard. It's sort of like, you know, they have um, hmm, scientific education evangelists who kind of go out and bridge the gap between normal folks who are doing their day to day and living life and doing their stuff and the people who write all of this very, very intelligent stuff that most people wouldn't be able to get through even if they tried. The apologists, right? The evangelists, they, they cover the gap between the people who are extremely knowledgeable and can make things happen that would make most of us sit back and go, whoa, dude, and everyday people who aren't as up on all jargon. And that's, that's really my place in life is to, you know, uh, there's so many things that can be done in messenger bots. I'm here to help you, help you under, understand that this tech is cool. It's cool. Uh, it's a little glitchy sometimes. It doesn't act perfect. I don't think there's any software out, where the, software out there that does, but tech is absolutely cool. And uh, watch that last nerdy girls. Uh, if you don't know what I mean. Uh, I love that you can ask for feedback within the bot. Me too. Me too. The last time I did market research was horrid. <laughs> I looked on Amazon. Uh, I looked on for book reviews. I looked on YouTube and looked at the comments and tried to figure out, okay, in what way are people speaking about this particular topic? And I took those things and I, I tried to craft messaging on my website and on my Facebook posts that kind of correspond as, as to how people are talking about this problem and, and how they're wanting a solution. And I tried to present myself as the solution master and all the things they tell you to do in a, in modern marketing school, I guess you'd call it, uh, which is basically just the internet. And I came up completely dry. Here is a way that I can just talk to people and ask them questions and ask them what they're thinking instead of guessing and providing them value because I know what they're going to find value in. They just told me. Um, it's it's magical. Uh, and I have a wand to prove it. All right. Very good. Uh, nerdy cool dude is in the house as always. Uh, very good. Let's see. All right. Flipping back to the beginning here. Shoot. I, I miss some folks. Rebecca's here. Hello, Rebecca. Good to see you today. Um. Oh, and by live, I mean in person. Absolutely. You can, you can use that. You can use a bot to 
to pull people in. Uh, you know, if you're at a very kind of a low stress uh, conference uh, and you need some some folks to you know, bring up some Q and A, or maybe come up on the stage with you for some reason. You can put that question out to your people and say, "Hey, this is what I need. Uh, can anybody can anybody help me with this?" Uh, that's absolutely something that can be done. Uh, okay, fantastic. Teresa says, "I do a camp in person," and I'm just going to read this one because it uh, it'll do the thing where it comes up to my eyeballs, which is really cute but somewhat non functional. Uh, I do a camp in person, and I thought it'd be a great way to invite people to the different classes in person. Sweet. I would use information as part of my bot as a teaching tool, but end the process with an invite to join me in person if they are local. Uh, perfect. Or if they're going to be in the area at the time, because you never know. That's a perfect way to do that um, because, because, you know, ideally, You'd have asked them some questions at the beginning, um, watch them walk the path long enough that you kind of know what classes they'll be interested in as well. So that you don't, here's what drives me crazy. We're so used to having people say, and where can we find you on the internet? And what's your offer today? And we have, we feel like we have to say a billion things in 30 seconds. No, not really. I only have to say the thing that you would respond to. In a live stream, it's not super possible, right? I can't read minds. Uh, I, you know, I'm, we're building the machine in the back, but it's just not ready yet. Anyway, um, in a bot, I can, I, I, I can tell what you're interested in. And I can, I can show you that one thing and say, hey, interested in learning about more or no? And if they're interested in learning about more, I can tell them more. I don't feel sleazy marketing in a bot. I don't. I don't feel like I'm pressuring people and giving them a false urgency and all of those kinds of things. I can just avoid all that by saying, hey, I got this for you. I thought you might be interested. What do you think? If they say no, pff, drop it like a hot rock. We're on to the next thing. If they are interested, then here's all the information and ask them to make a decision. Just like that call to action you're talking about there, Teresa, in the comments. Yeah. Um, in the process with an invite to join you. Uh, absolutely. You know, people want to have personal connections and get to know each other these days. Technology sometimes facilitates this. Sometimes it doesn't. So we'll talk about that on another day. Uh, teamwork together. Everyone achieves more. Well, that's true. That's true. Uh, and when you, when you're with your community you know it, you just know it. Um, okay, very good. Could my MLM clients use this technology? So absolutely. Now here it is. A lot of people who get into and we're talking about multi level marketing here, we're talking about direct sales, it goes by a lot of names. Uh, but a lot of people get into that as a side hustle. A lot of people build team members and, and do all of that kind of stuff. What I have experienced for sure is that uh, I actually have a client who does this. She has a team It's growing all the time because she's amazing at this stuff. And constantly people are asking her for training and more training. We put it all inside the bot. We've done this so that people can either hit up on a link uh, in their Facebook group or they can type a keyword in the bot and they can be brought specialized training. Here's how you frame this kind of conversation. Here's how you engage someone that has been missing for a while. Here's how you follow up on, you know, blah, 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 whatever you want. Putting training inside a bot and putting it in places, you know, the triggers are, I'm really interested in learning about this, crafting this kind of message today. It's so beautiful. Uh, it's so wonderful because it's on demand, right? We live, and I know you know this, we live on demand lives. Way long time ago, when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, you couldn't on demand just about anything entertainment wise. Uh, you could go rent a VCR tape. Who remembers this? You could go get a tape. Uh, you could watch something if you had one of those magical machines. You could do that on demand. But most 
most media that we consumed was timed by other people and on their schedule. We live in a different world. And so when you make training on demand within a bot, it fits people's lives better and more people are able to consume it. Um, so very good. Yeah, your MLM clients could use this tech. Where it, where I have found it to be more use, most useful is for all of the members on someone's team, training them and, you know, keeping them updated on here's what's available. Here's what's happening today. Here's how you can help people with this product or service or whatever it is. Team member management. A bot is so useful for that uh, because people can do training on demand and it's delivered in a way where that people have choices and they can choose about what they want to learn and they can bring that stuff up at any time. Um, so VHS or beta. Oh, it just brings me back to the day. You know what I'm saying, Adam? Uh, when you say those words, it brings me back to the day. Um, so we've gone through, get more audience members and get more people consuming your content, whatever that may be. Developing relationships with new people. This is huge. Can't just get them in the door and leave them. Can't just bring them all in. Can't just say, Hey, come and come to my party. And then they walk in the door and, uh, nobody even like, there's no party going on and nobody greets them. That's an awkward situation. You want to have a party going on when they come in. You want to be able to connect with them, have a conversation, bring that off, off the bot if possible at all. Um, and then finally, you can help your current clients get better results out of your product or service. It's beautiful, isn't it? So many people have created those online classes. So many people have the best product or service out there and they they get it to people and then people use about three percent of it what if that online class that you've built somebody's able to do to get all of the value possible out of it what happens do they forget about you do you have to email them every two days to keep top of mind no they're raving about you they're busy raving about you <laughs> because that online class or mastermind or whatever it is you've got going on with your current clients to keep them engaged. If they keep engaged throughout the entire process, you have gained a raving fan. Raving fans on the internet is how busy it is, how new eyeballs see you. And then we go back to number one, getting more eyeballs on your content. It's a virtuous circle, I think they call it. Uh, so very good. Um, <laughs> you guys are talking about uh, a bot is a mascot or a mass bot. Uh, yes, uh, very good. Um, so helping clients get better results. How do you do that through a bot? You can do uh, what I like to call encouragement marketing. I mean, it's nothing, right? It's like noticing that somebody is doing really well and stopping by and commenting on it. Hey, I've noticed that you made it through four parts of that course in record time. And I just want to say nobody has ever done that before. And congratulations. And I can't see, I can't wait to see what you do with the rest of this. Insert course name here. It's, it's nothing. It takes two minutes. And it makes people feel good about what they've done. And it makes people feel like they're spending time in a real place that is valuable. And, and that's the biggest worry I think that solopreneurs have. Am I going to waste my time with this? Because time is money and we're all, we're all doing a million things for ourselves. Uh, so the fear of wasting their time is always uppermost on people's minds. If you can show them that they're not, just show them that they're not, that's when the relationship is born. So encouraging people, encouraging people to follow through, uh, encouraging people when they have followed through, uh, encouraging people to chase, you know, whatever it is that's next on their list. That kind of stuff is, if you're a coach and you're listening to me right now, 
this is something that it pays dividends. People remember stuff. You know, people won't always remember what you did. People won't always remember what you said, but they'll remember how you made them feel. And if you can create that kind of an emotional bond within the bot, then chances are you'll take that conversation out of the bot and you'll have developed a relationship for, for life, whether that's a, tr whether transactions are included or not. That is really important stuff. Teresa says, that's what I was wondering. I'll do the, I'll do the Melvin. Uh, that's what I was wondering. I have a series of content that is sitting in cyberspace. Welcome. It's collecting cyber dust, isn't it? Uh, I want to get people using that content and then at the end, invite them to learn with me in person. Yes. Also known as inviting them to level up, right? Inviting people to, hey, if you've enjoyed this little circle in my world, what would happen if you got closer? Here are a few things that might happen. What do you think? Um, yeah, I, at the end of my bots, if you make it through all seven days of my mini course, my bot will invite you to have an, an ask me anything phone call with me personally. And it will always say this, uh, you know, if you think I'm cool in cartoon form, imagine me in person. And uh, then I offer people a call with me. Um, it, it absolutely works. You know, it absolutely works in just that way. And and getting people through, just providing them a little bit of encouragement. And the second thing is accountability. Providing people with a little bit of accountability for what's happening inside the bot, you know, asking them what their goals are, asking people to really say, hey, Bryce, Friday, I want it to have finished this. And then coming back on Friday and saying, hey, how did you do? It's a huge thing. It's a huge thing, especially to people that just work by themselves or maybe with one assistant or maybe have a distributed team. If you work by yourself all day, there's nobody to ask you if you got that thing done that you thought that you would do in the morning. Provide accountability inside the bot. Aaron Strayer's doing an accountability thing right now. It's an account accountability challenge. It's five days and it provides you with somebody who's listening to those goals that you want to accomplish and someone that will check back with you and say, Hey, how's it going? It's no longer just something I can put off because nobody but me knew about it. Your messenger bot knew about it. Uh, and believe me, it makes a big difference. Um, so let's see, uh, bot queen. Thank you. Uh, very much. Where do we send our people? Um, so in, in calls to action and things like that, um, where you send your people, I'm not sure I understand the question totally. So you might have to give me a few more details, Aaron. But uh, as for where I send people, I will send people, uh, you know, I'll send people to, to a call to action of some kind. Me, and this is just keeping it simple for me. Not all my clients do this and that's totally fine. But what I do is I set up a call to action for people to have further contact with me. Um, because I want to, you know, I, I want a face-to-face conversation if I can. What the bot does is it sorts people into groups, depending on how you answer a question. Sometimes I know I need to call that person right now because they're so ready for what I provide. It's done. I, they're on my list. Um, it sorts people into the into those groups of red hot, got to call them today. These people are interested, but not committed and maybe need a webinar or something like that to really help them decide and try this out. And then there are people who don't fit what I need. They, they don't fit what I'm providing. They don't need what I'm providing and I know it. Um, and so instead of having to sort all that out, one conversation at a time, one live conversation at a time, and that'll take a long time, you can do that you could do that onboarding within the bot. That's that developing relationship with new people. Um, in a bot, could you tell the bot to remind me that I have a meeting at 3 p.m.? At this time, no. But what's good for that is Alexa. <laughs> Alexa, Google Home, if you bought the Apple version of all of that, 
creating reminders, individual reminders and stuff like that, that is possible to do, but a bit complicated. And so, you know, so Adam or organize a group to meet at 3 p.m. Yes, you could organize a group to meet at 3 p.m. So, um, so if I say, you know, if I'm here and I'm like, uh, bot, Hey, remind me to do this thing at 3 PM. Um, I can set up a broadcast to send to myself at 3 PM, but that's a little bit of overkill. But if you're dealing with a group, you're organizing a group of people, see her at a conference, uh, Aaron and Kim and I are going to a conference, uh, in the beginning of September. And we want to organize the gang uh, to have, you know, a little meeting in, the, you know, a breakout room or something at 3 p.m. Then I can I can send that out through the bot. I can, you know, send out reminders to meet at a certain place in a certain time. You can absolutely do that. Just if you were doing it individual wise, it'd be a lot of work to set up for each individual. Uh, and I don't know if it would have as great of an outcome as Siri, Alexa, Google Home, those types of those types of products do that stuff a little bit better. Um, OK, so Aaron said to jump on your calendar or learn from you. Oh, and thank you for reminding me. So, my darlings, uh, I do have something that uh, that I want to talk to you about. Uh, and that is, I've kind of decided that I get so many questions around certain topics that I want to do a workshop in August. Uh, this workshop in August is centered around, you know, getting your feet wet with bots. So here's what I'm proposing. And if you are, if you're interested in this thing, uh, go to startyourbot.com. I'm going to throw that on the on-screen updates because I know how to do this. Uh, bot.com. Okay, go here. If you go to startyourbot.com, um, it's going to take you uh, to a spot where you get on, you're getting on a waiting list for a workshop I'm going to have in August that will, in three hours, take you from hearing crickets on your live stream or your podcast or whatever event you are putting on take you from zero to smoking hot show. I will in three hours, take you through signing up to many chat, upgrading to a pro account, setting listeners for certain events in the background, creating the reminder sequence, the very one that I use all the time uh, for my shows. And I'm going to teach you how to engage with your audience in the background. So that when you do have, when you get those people signing up for your bot, how do you engage them and pull them into conversation with you one-on-one? -on -one? I'm gonna do this for, for folks, it's a $97 thing and it's well worth three hours. I'm also gonna provide a recording because it's gonna be a fire hose, people. I am not kidding you. I could talk easily for three hours about bots and have, on this very program. No, eventually I do shut off the show at, at the hour, but you know what I'm saying. I'm gonna go through it step by step. We'll create show cards. We'll create little video, a little trailer videos. I'll show you how to do everything that I do to grow my audience, to grow my community in a bot. Uh, and that's all at startyourbot.com. Of course, if you want to just have me take care of uh, you know, you want to get into bots and you just want to have me take care of it. Uh, that is fine too. Uh, and I will put the link to my calendar. It's, uh, it's meet me dot. So black belt bot slash so me dot so slash I'm typing this out because I didn't do it beforehand. Sometimes I am not that organized. Okay. If you want to just get on my calendar for, free 30 minute ask me anything give me your top three questions i will give you answers to those questions um a lot of people have found this very helpful in you know do i really need a bot for my business well let me tell you what you can do with it uh bring me bring me your top three questions and at the end of the session you'll be able to decide is this path right for you or not 
you'll be given some examples uh, of what other people have done uh, to get themselves started in Messenger bots. All of that is free and you can jump right on my calendar today. Um, Cause I just want to talk, I, I just want to introduce this to as many people as I can. You know, it's hot right now. Everybody's like, you have to jump on it right now. You don't, you can wait until you're ready. I'll offer these, uh, I'll offer these things again. But if you're interested and you've, been sitting on the fence. It's it's a good time to just jump in, try and experiment, try it for a little while. If you don't like it, you can you, you can make a better decision later. Um, so uh, so yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there to you all. We're doing five days live next week. Uh, I am live streaming so often, folks. This is absolutely hilarious. So this week I am on every every day this week. Tomorrow I'm on with Stephen, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be building a bot for the live stream hub. I am on Thursday, regular time, regular channel, uh, hopefully with a, a very special guest that I've invited that I'm really excited about. Uh, our, our topic, if, if uh, she agrees, is storytelling with bots. Yes, I am doing that. That is going to be awesome show. And Friday, Nerdy Girls Geek Out. Me, Kim Boltzma, whoever we invite on, or just us, I don't know. But we're going to be nerdy, and we're going to geek out over marketing technology because we just need to share that with the world. Uh, next week is the, the five days live. It's going to be a lot of help for beginning live streamers. Uh, if this is something that you wanted, that one's, that one's super free and super fun, uh, going to be, uh, the entire week. Uh, and there's a lot of advertisement flipping around about it. So I believe it's not, it starts at nine, nine, nine AM Eastern every day and it'll run for an hour. Um, so yeah, see that show, Teresa, see that thing. You'll like that. I think. But delicious. Teresa says, so this is not someone who doesn't have a bot yet, I assume. Um, workshop bot shop. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, so for the for the the workshop that I'm running, if you already have uh, if you've already set up with ManyChat, if you've already got a reminder bot to uh, your shows, if you're already engaging with your customers, you're you belong in the 201. Okay, this one's going to be start from scratch. Um, so if you've already got all those things done, then this won't be the thing for you. Uh, but uh, I am sure we're going to make something happen at some point, Teresa, because you are, you know, you just. You're doing so well. Watch Teresa, you guys. Follow her on Instagram TV, IGTV, uh, because that stuff is awesome. I just think it's awesome. Uh, that's my opinion. I'm sticking with it. Um, very good. So, yeah, conference meeting for coffee and donuts. That's hilarious. Uh, very good. So, uh, so yeah, that's what's going on. If you If you want to... Hop in to start your bot. I'm not asking anybody to pay today. I'm putting everybody on a wait list. Um, and then I will sort my date out because uh, that's the, sort of the remaining decision here. And I will let you all know when, uh, when that is open. I'm really excited about it because I feel like it'll get a lot of people on their feet. Um, and that's, you know, sometimes that's all people need is, is just a hand. Uh, so that's going to be great. Yeah. Adam is brilliant. Uh, I'm glad that you know, too. Uh, that's awesome stuff. So what can you do with the messenger bot people? Get more, uh, get more people to your content, whether that's a live event or whether that's a blog or a podcast or a live stream, develop relationships with those people, whether they turn out to be a, uh, a collaborator a uh, referrer or a person who ends up paying you for business, develop that relationship and then help clients get better results. Um, those are the things that you can do with a messenger bot. You can do this. If you're a yoga teacher, if you are a life coach, if you are, a, if you're a person who I'm trying to think of something not in the trades because my mind just flipped to what if you're a roofer? Could you use a bot? You absolutely could use a bot to onboard and to educate people into what 
the process of releasing, replacing your roof is going to be. Real estate? Yes, hello. Yes, hello. Real estate people. Um, you can use it for just about anything. And, uh, and in fact, I have not yet thought of a job description that would not include some in education on who you are and what you do. And that can be done in a bot, and I can show you how to do that. Uh, very good. Thanks, Brad Friedman, for stopping by. Uh, he's got a great show going on, too. Uh, Wednesdays, I think it's at 2 o'clock, but I could. If I'm wrong, please put it in the comments, Brad. Uh, don't forget, hey, if you want to know every time I go online, type live in the comments. And uh, I will send you a little reminder before the shows start so that you can you know, get your favorite beverage ready and uh, rock an afternoon with me because there's nothing I love more than talking to you all. Uh, thank you again for watching. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, Adam says, bots also keep people interested in their attention to your topic. Oh, absolutely. And people can self-select that, which really, really makes it interesting and good for me. It makes me feel like I'm talking to people who have an interest in what I'm saying. It does keep people interested because there's new stuff popping up all the time about whatever your product or service is. Technology changes every minute and technology mostly touches what people do unless you are hidden in a monastery. Um, which messenger bots won't work for you there. Uh, they just won't. Uh, so very good. Okay. Your show's at 5 p.m. Eastern. So four central, three mountain, two Pacific. Uh, catch the Brad. He's on the live video hub and he's on uh, the Friedman group uh, Facebook page. Uh, all good stuff there. Uh, so that's it for me today, darlings. Tomorrow, uh, if you want to see me build a bot with Stephen Healy, it's going to be happening 1 Central, 2 Pacific. It's going to be happening on the Be Live in 5 page. We'll probably beam into the Be Live group and cross post everywhere we can so people can get us. Uh, we're going to be building things for a bot, and uh, there's nothing I love more. So tune in tomorrow, tune in Thursday. Tune in Friday if you'd like. And that's it for now. With that, I'm going to say goodbye. And I'll see you in a bot.